Welcome back to my channel, Greg Allen F1. Been a couple weeks since I was able to make a video. I was in the process of moving, but I'm back. And we just had a bonkers Bahrain Grand Prix here in 2020. And obviously I want to start off by just saying I'm very, very grateful that Roman Grosjean is okay. I've been watching uh, motorsports racing for uh, basically 30 years, not to age myself a little bit here. Um, one of the craziest crashes I've ever seen. It reminds me of, of the Jeffrey Bodine crash in NASCAR at Daytona in 2000, where you just look at, at the way the car was destroyed and you're totally perplexed on how the driver was able to walk away from that and still be alive. Uh, and I just want to say uh, to any Roman Grosjean fans out there, and of course Roman Grosjean, uh, definitely thinking about you and, and glad that you're okay and hope that the injuries and burns are not too bad. Uh, I've never seen anything like that. To see a car uh, sheared in half, the way it was and go up in flames like that was terrifying um that that pity your stomach feeling uh it was the first thing that happened to me and uh, you know you just when you watch racing long enough you know when a crash is really bad right away and that was one of those ones where uh, i just was hanging my head low until until i saw he was okay the images of him literally crawling out of a ball of fire is not something that'll leave my head anytime soon um but i was just so grateful that he did get out of that race car so roman grosjean is okay for the most part maybe some broken ribs uh and some burns to his hands and feet but considering what could have happened uh i think that that's fantastic news and i'm just really grateful he's okay that causes a red flag obviously that would last for a very long time we would really be about an hour and 45 minutes into this uh scheduled race before we actually got going here and of course we have a restart from stopping and we don't make it through another lap again. Lap three, Lance Stroll gets tagged by Kvyat and flips over. So another scary crash. Nowhere's near as scary as the Roman Grosjean one. These cars can handle a small flip like that pretty well. But just a crazy start to this race to have the, the horrific crash that Grosjean had. And we don't get through another lap and Lance Stroll's upside down and out of the car. Which would also start a pretty unfortunate day for Racing Point. Full safety car for that one. Under that safety car, uh, Valtteri Bottas, the bad luck of 2020 continues with him. He gets a puncture to his tire. That would pretty much take him out of contention of this race. So Mercedes has had a fantastic year with Hamilton, but when you really look at Valtteri Bottas, he's had a pretty rough year when it comes to luck, and I think he'll be pretty happy for 2020 to be over and to look forward to 2021 and maybe having a little less bad luck moving forward. Lap 9, we finally get a restart. And we get our first full lap of green flag racing almost two hours into this event. Esteban Ocon makes a great pass, and that would be a pretty interesting battle between Ocon and Ricardo all day. Ricardo struggles in the beginning of this race. Uh, on both restarts, in lap one and lap three, he didn't get a good start and lost a lot of positions. And he would continue to struggle. I think that, that medium compound he started on really didn't fit him well. And he would really kind of have to work his way to get back up into this race. Lap 12... Uh, Carlos Sainz makes a fantastic pass, and McLaren had a really good day for me. Um, it's been a while since both McLarens were kind of in that that fifth through eighth spot, and usually you have one or the other, and it's either Sainz and Norris's way out, or Norris is in there and Sainz's way out. But Carlos Sainz and Lando Norris both have a fantastic race. Carlos Sainz made some great moves, and it was fun because he was battling uh, Charles Leclerc there. They're going to be teammates next year, so good stuff for that. Lap 13, Ferrari struggles continue. Charles Leclerc gets passed by Sainz. Then he winds up getting passed by Gasly. And slowly, uh, we see Leclerc kind of falling back. Meanwhile, Sebastian Vettel in the same lap is on the radio saying that his car is literally undrivable. So not a very good day for Sebastian Vettel. Ferrari definitely had its struggles today. Lap 18, pit stops begin. And that was definitely a relief. Kimi Raikkonen had a damaged wing that was, was going around dragging on the ground. Uh, at certain corners and I think a lot of people after what happened in the beginning of this race uh, the announcers were talking about how if that thing goes and takes its tire out it could create a horrific crash again I think that was in the minds of everybody uh, after what we saw to start this Grand Prix uh, again uh, just a unbelievable reminder of how dangerous this sport can be these cars have come so far along with safety but you just never know and, and I do want to talk a little bit at the end of this video about that crash a, a little bit more in detail but I think that we were all on high alert, and the announcers were on high alert. Kimi Raikkonen, a little bit of wing damage. They were thinking about worst-case scenario. So everyone a little relieved when Raikkonen was able to fix that front wing. Lap 27-28, a really good battle starts between Renault and McLaren, which obviously in the constructors is a pretty important one. And I think that it has to be said that Renault missed an opportunity to swap Daniel Ricciardo and Esteban Ocon earlier, and it allowed McLaren to catch up and pass both Renaults. And it was definitely a missed opportunity there. And... Renault, I think 
they made some strategy gaffes for me today. And even when they were pitting their cars, they undercut their own car by having Akon undercut um, Daniel Ricardo, and it made Ricardo have to work to get around Akon again. And I don't really know what was going on there with the strategy. It just kind of seems like they were just a little off all day long, and it cost them. Um, McLaren kind of got ahead of them, and, and they they struggled. They'll make up for that a little bit with what happened to Racing Point today. But either way, I, I felt like strategy was a little off there. Good battle, nonetheless, though. And and honestly, the battle between Akon and Ricardo was some of the best racing we saw all day. So I'm not totally complaining. Lot 35, Max Verstappen and Red Bull tries to undercut uh, Lewis Hamilton. He kind of was in that five-second range of Hamilton, and he comes in, and all year long, Red Bull has been the best pit crew, and then they have a bad stop. He has about a five-second stop, and, and those few seconds mattered a lot. When everything worked its way through, uh, he was about three seconds off of Lewis Hamilton, and that was that was really the ball game for you know lack of a better term there. So when they really needed to get a good stop, they didn't get it. And what really was unfortunate for Verstappen is that Albon pitted right after him and got a fantastic stop. So, bad timing for that to happen. Max has been brilliant this year. Uh, it's just that the, the slight little differences between when you need a big stop like that and one of those sub-two-second stops that would have put him right really on, the, on the, the rear end of Lewis Hamilton, they don't get it. And that's just been the difference that no one seems to be able to get that extra bit of margin just to get right behind Lewis Hamilton all year. And that's how it goes. Lap 51, Checo has a pretty funny moment where he makes sure his team is awake. Checo is having a fantastic day. He raced great. Um, early in the race, we thought that Alex Albon in a Red Bull would be able to chase him down and pass him, and it doesn't happen. Checo races not only fantastically to stay ahead of Albon, but there were times where he was challenging uh, up on second, and, and you know he wasn't really challenging Hamilton, but he was up there with him after a couple pit stops. So has a good good moment of ask, making sure his team's awake because they're not saying anything because things are going perfectly. Unfortunately, just three laps later, that joke would uh, would not be so funny for him. Lap 51, we also get news that Roman Grosjean was voted as the uh, driver of the day for the Bahrain Grand Prix. A really nice gesture from the fans. Again, everyone thinking about Roman. Um, and, you know, we hear that he might have some broken ribs. So this might have been the last uh, Grand Prix we get to see Roman Grosjean in, in Formula 1. And that's a really unfortunate way for him to, to go out if that's the case. Maybe it won't be. Hopefully we'll see him back in the car in a week or two. Um, but either way, a nice gesture for Grosjean to be driver of the day. Lap 54, uh, a little bit of late drama. Again, and this is what would end the race. Uh, Perez comes off of a turn. Smoke comes out of his car, takes another turn, and it just goes up in a puff. Unfortunately, he tries to keep going, and then the back of the car just ignites, and he has to pull over and retire it. And that's going to cost him a back-to-back -back podium. Checo, for me, has been one of the best drivers all year long. It, it is so sad for me that he's probably not going to be in Formula 1 next year. I, I He's really want, become one of my favorite drivers this year of how good he is. And... Even more uh, salt in the wound if you're a Checo fan, but also something I'm excited about. Him losing third allows Alex Albon to take over third. Albon had a, a quietly a very good, consistent, solid race for Red Bull. There's still some concern about how far off of his teammate he was uh, as far as he was like 24 seconds off of him at this time. But he gets a podium, and Perez's only hope for a ride next year is that second seat Red Bull. And Albon does the exact type of race he needs to do. And, and do consistently to keep that seat. So after having a crash in practice, Alex Albon uh, races a fantastic race, stays consistent, runs a good run, and puts himself in a position to capitalize on an issue for that racing point and gets his second career podium at the absolute right time. And if he can follow it up with a solid you know, podium in the next two races and maybe a, a fourth or fifth, uh, I think Alex Albon's going to keep his ride. So good stuff for Alex Albon. Very unfortunate for Sergio Perez, and what a horrible day for Racing Point in general. Uh, race does end under a safety car, and, and I, I do have to also say this. You go from the beginning of this race where you have a, a flip and a, a horrible crash with Roman Grosjean, and we're all talking about how great the safety workers were. Some marshal and safety worker did something crazy when, when Perez pulled over to the side there. Someone ran across the racetrack right in front of Lando Norris. I, I, I don't know how that happens in 2020, and I don't know how that happens when you see some of the horrific stuff that's happened in this race already. The last thing we need is a marshal getting run over. And, and, you know, even under a safety car situation, these cars are still moving at an incredible you know, pace of, of probably around 80 miles per hour. And that's like running across the fast lane of a freeway or, or motorway. And, and I don't know why someone would do that. It really, they have to look into that. There's a couple questionable things, and I'm going to talk about that now about Bahrain. 
Their safety workers did a great job overall, getting Roman out of the car, being right there for Lance Stroll. But some of the angles of the walls and the type of barriers that they put up, I understand it's a low risk or low probability that Grosjean's going to hit that barrier the way he did in that section of the track because it wasn't a turn, it was a straightaway. But by comparison, in, in the United States, there are not really any racetracks I can think of that would have a situation with the angle of impact without even be a possibility. And I know that was a big problem in NASCAR for years. I mean, it took him probably 10 years to finally get it right. But you're not going to have those awkward angle crashes. And you're certainly not going to hit a three-piece guardrail barrier that can sh shred a car like it did to Roman Grosjean. And make no mistake about it, if it were not for the halo, Roman Grosjean would probably be dead right now. And that's a terrifying thought. So something I'd like to just see some of these racetracks take a look at. It, it, there's track engineers that design these things. I don't understand how you don't understand the, the angle of impact there and maybe taking a closer look at, at at least having safer barriers in all spots of the racetrack, but not having uh, an angle coming out towards the racetrack like that. And, and I'm, you know, I'm not just speaking as some, you know, random fan. I do look at this stuff at, at, in all forms of motorsports and, uh, and in my, my day job when I'm not on Formula One, I am an engineer. And so that's something that kind of stuck out to me and it was a little scary but then they have someone run across the track. There's just no excuse for that. Absolutely no excuse. And, and I do hope that we get some, some follow-up of what they're going to do to make sure that every safety worker and marshal at these racetracks knows not to run across a, a hot racetrack. You just don't do it. Um, I've been around racing for a long time. You just never, you never go on a racetrack that's unsafe like that. And uh, it just, it happens time and time again. And it ha haven't happened in 2020 at this level of motorsport is really concerning. Anyway, Hamilton wins again. Uh, he's very close to taking over the all-time record for laps led. I think he'll probably do that next week. He almost leads every lap of this race. I think he didn't lead one lap because he pit before Verstappen. Verstappen has a brilliant day. He does everything he can to try and win these races in that Red Bull. Uh, they're just not as fast as, as Mercedes and Lewis Hamilton. And like I said earlier, Alex Albon has uh, the absolute day he needs. So Albon, fantastic stuff from him. And if he continue, continues to do that in the next two weeks, where he's in that fourth, third, or second spot, I think he'll be in that Red Bull next year. So hopefully he can avoid that. Recovering after that crash in practice to, to podium, that's good stuff from Albon. Congratulations to him. And Red Bull gets a double podium for the first time all season. And they do it at Bahrain, where I, I don't think they had a podium in a night race here before. Uh, I'll have to look into that. So either way, good stuff for Red Bull. Obviously, Lewis Hamilton has a good one. Roman Grosjean, though. Most terrifying crash I've seen in Formula One that someone didn't, uh, you know, lose their life in. So very glad that he's okay. Anyway, if you like this content, please consider giving me a like and subscribe. I will try to be a little more consistent moving forward. I have been moving, which is why I have not posted videos as often as I normally do. My move is almost over, though, so I'll be back to two or three videos a week very soon. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.